Welsh and Scottish forces are rebelling against King Henry IV of England. Douglas leads the Scottish rebels and Owen Glendower leads the Welsh. In a recent battle, Hotspur, the name of Henry Percy, captured some rebel leaders while fighting on the side of the king. However, Hotspur refuses to send the prisoners to the king as required, so the king summons him to explain. This first scene acts as a prologue and an introduction. It provides contextual information on action the audience doesn't see, and it sketches in core relationships both political and interpersonal. In a comic subplot, Prince Hal, the elder son of the king and heir to the throne, is at a tavern drinking with Sir John Falstaff and other thieves. Falstaff invites Prince Hal to join him in robbing a group of religious pilgrims. Prince Hal refuses, but then another thief points, suggests that they disguise themselves and rob Falstaff as a joke. The prince agrees, but tells the audience he intends to take his political place soon and so will have to give up playing such pranks. The second scene introduces new characters and points out the clash between appearance and reality. Not only is Prince Hal going to wear a disguise and pretend to rob his friends, but he also shares his plans to play at being a slovenly drunk until it suits him. At which point, his newly honourable behaviour will attract more eyes. When Hotspur arrives at King Henry's court, he explains that he refused to send the prisoners to the king because he took offence at the way a courtier addressed him after the battle. Hotspur then asks the king to pay the ransom to release his brother-in-law, Edmund Mortimer, from the Welsh rebels. But King Henry refuses, believing Mortimer to be a traitor. This offends Hotspur's honour, so he joins the rebels. Honour and order define the scene. Hotspur believes his honour is wounded when a foppish courtier makes demands on him. Hotspur claims that the king refused to ransom Mortimer because the prior King Richard II named Mortimer as his heir. The presence of someone with a better claim to the throne would be a continual threat to the king's legitimacy and therefore to England's political order. No matter why the king chooses not to pay Mortimer's ransom, Hotspur takes it as a serious insult to his own honour. The king's decision instigates the remainder of the political plot, as the powerful Percy family will now join the Scottish and Welsh rebellion. In Act <laughs> 2, when the thieves go to rob the pilgrims, yeah. Prince Hal and Points sneak away, disguise themselves and rob their friends. Afterwards, Falstaff tells Prince Hal and Points a story about the robbery, casting himself as a hero who fought many men. Prince Hal reveals that it was he and Points in disguise who robbed Falstaff. A messenger from the king arrives and orders Prince Hal to court. To prepare for the meeting with his father, Prince Hal holds practice interviews with Falstaff. The scene ends with a sheriff coming for Falstaff, who hides with Prince Hal and promises the sheriff that he will deal with it. This scene shows Prince Hal at the lowest, even as it shows what he gains from associating with thieves and commoners. On the one hand, he really enjoys getting to know different sections of society. On the other hand, Prince Hal's behaviour toward a tavern worker is downright mean and lacks the honour expected of a prince. The gap between appearance and reality continues to be stretched as Prince Hal and Falstaff alternatively play act the roles of King Henry and Prince Hal. The scene shows how Falstaff acts as a father figure for Prince Hal and it also foreshadows the prince's eventual ascendance to the throne. In the political plot, Hotspur, Mortimer, Glendower and Wooster, Hotspur's uncle, meet to plan the rebellion. Hotspur's attitude is on display as he argues with Glendower and complains about the portion of England that will go to him once it is conquered. In this scene, the political plot moves forward as the audience gains insight into the characters of Hotspur, Glendower and Mortimer. The rebel leaders show how important honour is to them and how aware they are of the way people view them. Still, even among themselves, differences exist. The Welsh Glendower represents a pagan order. Hotspur represents a Christian English sensibility in which people have free will and are responsible for their own destiny. At court, King Henry tells Prince Hal that he is disappointed in him. Moved, Prince Hal swears he's the king's true son and will act like it. 
He will prove his honor and virtue on Hotspur's head, even if he has to die to do it. Pleased by this, the king gives him a military command. Just then, a messenger arrives to announce that the Scottish and English rebels have joined forces. Unlike previous scenes in which Prince Hal changes his mind or interacts with multiple characters in different ways, he remains steadfast. No matter how many times his father rebukes him, he answers with the same sincere regret and promise of redemption. Back at the tavern, Falstaff is drinking and complaining to the innkeeper. Fresh from his fatherly harangue, Prince Hal enters and tells Falstaff he's obtained a commission for Falstaff to gather a group of soldiers. From this point on, the two distinct plots join up. Act 4 opens with the rebels. A messenger brings the news that Northumberland, Hotspur's father, is too sick to fight, but the rebels decide to fight anyway. Then they learn more bad news. Glendower will be delayed from the fight for two weeks. The absence of Northumberland and Glendower highlights the risk and the danger for the rebel forces. At first they fear they will look weak, and finally they begin to realize how weak they truly are and what the consequences of their actions might be. Falstaff, on behalf of the king, marches to war with a third-rate army of men because he let better men buy their way out of fighting. His actions reflect on the larger plot. The disorder in the kingdom has resulted in Falstaff's presence in the battle, and he has gathered a third-rate army of men who will serve only as bodies to die on a warrior's sword. Additionally, the rebels, like Falstaff, are manipulating matters of honour and affairs of state for their own profit, just as they have accused the king of doing. It does not matter to any of them that poor, weak, powerless men will die as a result. The action shifts back to the rebels arguing over what to do. Sir Walter Blunt arrives, bringing an offer of forgiveness from the king in return for an end to the rebellion. The rebels have to decide by morning whether they will accept the king's offer. The rest of the scene continues to demonstrate how an overblown sense of honor prevents people from making the best choices. Act five starts on the battlefield where leaders from both sides meet. King Henry criticizes Wooster, but he again offers forgiveness if they'll stop. Wooster says the king caused the rebellion by rebelling himself against the previous king and taking his throne. The king counters that the rebels are exaggerating. To prevent widespread bloodshot, Prince Hal challenges Hotspur to single combat. Instead, the rebels decide to fight en masse. In this scene, Wooster and Vernon meet with the king and his core loyal supporters to give their response to the offer Sir Walter Blunt delivers in Act 4, Scene 3, as opposed to the king's behavior in Act 1, Scene 1, when he treats Hotspur harshly for not turning over his prisoners. Here, the king demonstrates generosity and diplomacy. Unlike the rebels, he's willing to risk his own personal honor to save his army and reunite his country a tremendous sacrifice that stands in direct contrast to the rebels' constant bickering about petty symbols of honor. In the next scene, Wooster refuses to tell his allies about the king's offer and lies about what the king said in ways that distort the reality and wound their allies' honor. Wooster's behavior is another sign of disorder in the kingdom. Rebellion breeds rebellion, Messengers within the rebel army cannot be trusted to deliver messages truthfully. As the battle begins, Douglas slays Blunt, who's pretending to be King Henry. Douglas thinks he has killed the king until Hotspur enters and explains that many people are fighting disguised as the king. The scene shifts to King Henry, Prince Hal, Lord John, the king's younger son, and Westmoreland, a military leader loyal to the king. Prince Hal is injured, but he refuses to leave the field. After most of the loyalists leave, Douglas enters and attacks the king. In an effort to prove himself, Prince Hal returns and drives Douglas away. Impressed, the king tells his older son that this act has redeemed him for all his previous laziness and disorder. This first half of this scene is the climax of the play. It brings together many of the play's themes and resolves most of the plot issues. Prince Hal and Lord John are acting like pure icons of honor, textbook examples of what a brave heroic knight should be. Likewise, all tension between King Henry and Prince Hal is resolved. 
The two are fighting for the same cause. Their only disagreements are tactical, as they consider the best action to take next. The battle between Prince Hal and Hotspur confirms the Prince's prowess and honour and the rebels' defeat. They meet voluntarily, fighting one on one. There is no deception, and though Falstaff stands by to cheer on Prince Hal, no one helps him. It is a battle between champions, which Prince Hal wins. Both the method of the fight and the outcome immensely increase Prince Hal's honour and stature. A trumpet sounds, signalling that the king's forces have won. In the final scene, King Henry sentences the captured Wooster and Vernon to death. Douglas has also been taken prisoner, but is released because of his valour. The king swears to defeat the rebels who still lurk in the kingdom. If this were television, this scene would be the season finale that sets up the action for the new season to follow. Some of the rebels are dead, while others are prisoners and sentenced to die. Others, specifically Douglas, were captured but released. And as the king points out in this statement from his closing speech, he still has two sets of rebels to fight, including the mighty Owen Glendower. Let us not leave till all our own be one.